Welcome into the ESPN FC studio. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Ali Moreno and Stevie Nickel. Gab Margotti, Don Hutchison will be with us in a moment. Today it was announced that Bruno Fernandes won the Player of the Month award in the Premier League. Of course, he's been a revelation since making that big money move to Old Trafford. In fact, when he's played, they haven't lost. Nine matches, three goals, four assists as well. Uh, Don, has he saved United's season? Oh, I think that's fair to say. I think he's been absolutely sensational since he's come through the door. Um, I think he's raised the bar inside the dressing room. I think everyone looks as though they're on his wavelength. The, the, the one person I'm watching that I think's got on the same wavelength is Bruno Fernandes, is Anthony Martial. He's all of a sudden started to come alive. You saw that, that free kick the other day where it was rehearsed from the training ground and they were... They were certainly look as though they're a real good partnership. Um, at 25, he's the right age. He wears the shirt well. He's got a persona. He's got a character. He's got a little bit of arrogance, you saw, in the spat that he had, had with Pep Guardiola the other week as well. So I think Man United fans are going to love him for many a year. I think he's a top, top player. Gab, has he surprised you how well he's done? I th it certainly surprised me how quickly he settled. Um, I mean, I think Don's right there. Uh, you know, often you got to know where somebody comes from, right? So this is a guy who, at a very, very young age, left Portugal, bounced around, played for some very, very ordinary teams in Serie A. People thought, oh, look, he's such a talent, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to go out on a limb and, and we're going to sell him for a ton of money and he's going to be an instant fix. Well, he wasn't. He really, really, he really struggled because he was surrounded by terrible players. And then he goes back to, to, to Portugal um, and he becomes... The, the, the player that he can be. And he's got this tremendous personality, but he's still a player with an enormous price tag. And I certainly didn't expect him to live up uh, to his price tag on such a dysfunctional team, such a poorly built team, to be able to do that so quickly to make the players around him better. Um, I think that's, that's hugely impressive. And we'll see if it continues. You're getting carried away too soon? Um, there's always that temptation particularly when, when it's so obvious that the difference he's made and so obvious he's joining a team that needed something. So far, he's been the inspiration. I, I always wondered why, you know, for the last couple of years, he's always been mentioned by the top size, mm. but it seems nobody's ever gone that extra, extra mile and signed him. And I guess, you know, what Gab's saying there, I didn't know about, about his previous, to be honest. And I would have to think that's what put clubs off. But Manchester United are actually going to benefit. Yeah. Because clearly the guys figured it out. And when you've been through a tough situation and you turn all that around and you start doing the things he's doing in the Premier League, then that, that to me, I don't believe is going to be a flash in the pan. I think he's here to stay. When Gab just mentioned that this is a poorly structured team, a dysfunctional team, you know what a poorly structured team and a dysfunctional team needs? They need a focal point. They need a guy that you can rely on that, you know what, give us some direction. And so I think what he has done is he has provided a natural outlet for everybody on that team. It's okay, if we're in trouble, you give it to him, he's going to figure out the rest for us. Once we give it to Bruno Fernandes, he has an idea as to what he wants to do with the ball. He can, he can read the play. He can see the passes. He can execute those passes. He can join in the attack. Now, are we getting carried away in the sense that, well, we ha the sample size is not that big, but because the bar was so low with Manchester United, when you see a player that actually looks like a player and does so with consistency and has made the difference that he has made, then clearly there is a reason to get excited. Gab, a lot of people critical about Woodward and the way he's gone about things and the signings that he's made. But he's got this one right, hasn't he? You look at Juan Vasaka as well. He deserves credit for this, doesn't he? Come on, you know Woodward's not going to get credit for, for from United fans because you're the same guys who said, well, gee, clever clogs, why didn't you sign him six months earlier in the summer? You were linked to him all summer long. You know, and I, you're also the guy who went and spent, you know, an absurd amounts of money on, on, on Maguire. So there's give and take. I think, I, I, don't, I don't think, people, look, people in Woodward's position will always be criticized. Uh, it's very difficult. How often do you see people waxing lyrical about uh, about their, their their executive chairman or chief executive <laughs> or whatever whatever his title is, uh, you know, for the players that he delivers? It's extremely extremely rare. So so far he's done a good job here. Um, Bruno Fernandez has, but you can just as easily say, why didn't you 
get him in the summer and then we could have had him for six months and then maybe we'd be in the top four right now. Don, last word on this. Let's play a bit of fantasy, shall we? Say United sign Grealish and Jadon Sancho in the summer. Yeah. Could United mm -hmm. realistically push for a title? <laughs> Uh, good question. Um, I think they could with those names. Um, I still think they need um, a top quality centre back because I'm pretty sure that Guardiola in the summer will try and sign Milan Skriniar from Inter. He's, he's in my opinion, alongside Koulibaly, probably the best centre half in world football. So it'll be interesting to see if Pep gets that one over the line. Where does Koulibaly end up? Um, if you add Koulibaly to that list, I think United could be really strong candidates for, for challenging. Um, but I can only imagine that Liverpool are going to raise the bar in the summer. I can imagine that certainly Man City are going to raise the bar as well. So they are going to take a little bit of time to catch up. But with those names, you, you have to fancy them to be contending. Gab, are you laughing at my question? <laughs> no, no, I, I... Well, yes, a little bit. No, look, <laughs> I, I, I think obviously... Obviously, they would be better, but um, I, I agree with Don. Uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Um, certainly in defense, I'd argue, also in midfield. Because, frankly, other than Bruno Fernandes and, and, and McTominay, you don't know what you're going to get from Pogba, if you're ever going to get from Pogba. And the rest of in the midfield mm. is guys like Fred and Matic and Lingard. And so I think, I think that's another position that you would look to, to strengthen. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.